Hey guys, this is Candle, and welcome back to Age of Wonders. It's time to start on the campaigns, and that last, last time we started the tutorial with the Keepers, so this time we will actually start the campaigns with the Cult of Storms. Rid the world of both the humans and the Keepers. Rebuild the Elven Court in the Valley of Storms. Resurrect the greatest Elven Lord, Inyok. Restore order under their own law and power. That are their aims. So when we join it, it says, Of the Storm Lords, only I am worthy to wield the Just Blade in the Valley of Wonders. While others dare not risk their hiding places, I shall endure the light, gathering true power for a true king, Meandor. I am here. I am ready. And it just keeps scrolling, so we'll click click past that yeah so we can just go off with the default character or we can do something custom and what we're gonna do here is I think we'll keep the the names uh, I like keeping default names whenever possible it helps me feel more like uh, more like what we're doing is is the intent of the developers and so on and we can actually change our race as well to dark elf or goblin lizard Azrak. it doesn't really matter what race you choose or your portrait or your name it's all just cosmetic stuff but what really matters is this. So here we can choose different skills and points and everything. And uh, it starts off with everything filled out for us. You know, you got your base values, you got your extra, you got uh, abilities and so on. And what I want to do is actually get rid of archery. And let's lower defense by one. That gives us 15 points. Because here you can see all the different abilities you can get throughout the game. And some of these you can only get at character creation. Specifically, the one I want is Dominate, which allows the unit to force their will upon others. Basically, this allows us to uh, take enemy units in combat and make them our own. So I definitely want to add that. That's an ability that is only available at character creation. So I definitely want that. And uh, then we get to select our magic. We can choose up to three spheres. Default is level two death and one fire. Now, what's interesting is... You can see the six different spheres here. There's actually seven spheres of magic. You have life and its opposition of death, earth and its opposition of air, and fire and its opposition of water. The seventh sphere of magic is uh, cosmos, which is the general spells. Everybody has access to cosmos spells uh, in the early stages of the campaign up to level three. Now what we want to do, and when you uh, check one, uh, sphere of magic it automatically cancels out the opposing one you can't say get death and life together so let's go ahead and get two death and we'll do a fire we'll we'll keep the default it doesn't really matter what i really wanted uh in creating a custom character was dominate so we'll go ahead and hit finish here and out from exile of all the storm lords i will write the testament of glorious change too long have the beings in sunlight made a pretense of peace to drive us deeper into shadowy exile Ancient Lord Inyak kept the Valley of Wonders in perfect order until beings called humans overran it. These short-lived mortals desired anarchy and bloodshed over Inyak's reign. Centuries pass, but each time we seek revenge, our enemies, led by keepers, thwart us while humans build their homes upon our bones. Meandor summons all the Cult of Storms to stop neglecting the duty to our progenitors and act. Rise from banishment out of the caves and clefts in rock. The time of bondage is ended. A star of justice burns over the guilty humans, over our valley of wonders. Unlike us, they shall have no shadow wherein to hide, for the darkness belongs to Meandor. Yet, deceivers control the surface world. The keepers ignore the ancestral blood which pleads for vengeance. They favor a fate of slow extinction. They suffer for the lie of peace, blinded by the day daylight, believing calm can be achieved by cooperation. But I know the truth. Only by coercion can true peace be obtained. So here we have the campaign menu. And uh, basically this allows us to view the current summary, select our next mission, change some settings, and so on. You can show info. This shows your, your current allies, which we have none at the moment because we haven't started the game yet. As well as shows you the names of all the various regions and what... Uh, what races control each region. Like the halflings are in the Flower Shire, goblins to the south. You've got the lizard men on the peninsula of Sobek. You have the Pass of Grief and the Elven Court in the Valley of Wonders itself. 
And then here we've got different settings we can change. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this on normal as much as possible. I have never beaten the campaigns on, on hard. Actually, I've never beaten the campaign short of cheating. So there may be a point where I have to bump it down to easy. We'll see. And then turn mode, you can choose between simultaneous and classic. I'm going to choose classic because simultaneous is a little bit odd. Simultaneous tries to emulate this game as if it was a, a real-time strategy game when it's really truly a turn-based game. So what happens in simultaneous is everybody is taking their turn at the same time. Everybody's taking their uh, using the same day, and uh, but the actual actions still happen in turn, where whoever can get them in first will will see that action go through. So. When you're trying to set up certain fights, it makes this really odd dance where you send your your uh, party to the location of an enemy only to find out that as soon as you get there, the enemy moves. <laughs> and it's it's not fun, I don't think. But uh, classic is more just everybody takes their turn before the day is through. Go ahead and hide info. And as you as the, the game progresses, you'll see our progress as we strive towards our goal of the Valley of Wonders itself. Assassination. The other storm lords laugh and sigh relief. Cowards. They say I must prove my worth to the cult. While they hide in shadows, I shall accomplish Meandor's bidding. The goblins are eager to die for a cause, looking back only to a lifetime of slavery. I will show them their strength, and they will be slaves no longer. I shall record all their exploits, and they will see me as the first god that didn't abandon them. For many years, the goblins have toiled, secretly crafting a cavern beneath the Aldorian Channel. I will raise an army of goblins and strike against the Queen of Aldor's elves. The mission is simple. Assassinate Elwyn, a, le a key leader among the Keepers. The other Stormlords are loath to strike against her, believing her palace to be impregnable. So while they cower, I will finish Meandor's scheme. Upon the Isle, the Keepers shelter a village of goblin refugees, na naively believing they can change their feral nature. The fools now harbor more spies for the Cult of Storms than we could have hoped to place, and when we appear, the village will join our assassination goal. So now we get a little bit of a uh, story about the goblins themselves, a little bit of uh, lore about them. From birth, goblins endure slavery, whether by their own kind or by bully races. They are nasty and clever, employing all sorts of deviant methods to compensate for their small physiques in battle. Though greedy, they are easily intimidated and fight for little more than the crack of a whip. Goblin foot soldiers use long spears to get the first strike on enemies. Others employ poison darts and blowguns. Frail and worthless members of goblin society are given the task of delivering explosive bundles which can be used to destroy walls and enemies with devastating effectiveness. The Keepers linger, ignorant of their impending demise. So we get our first turn here and we get to choose our first... Uh, uh, spell to research and you can see all three spheres of magic available to us we got fire we've got death and then this purple one here that is cosmos now here's a quirk about this game that I encountered when I first played it when I was a kid that drove me crazy the tutorial does not cover everything you need to know about playing this game because there are certain units like say the uh, goblin uh, uh, big beetle that have abilities called tunneling and for the life of me i could not figure out how to get over here because i didn't know about tunneling it didn't make sense to me now the game's kind of set up to kind of encourage you to play the keepers first play through that campaign first and by that point once you finish that you kind of already know about this ability instead what you want to do is just go over here just go straight through there and that says the court of alder lies on the surface to the north because what happens is if you don't break through there and you take everything to the south here and go to the surface and, and take everything there uh you will end up not having enough resources to actually continue the game in, or in order to actually win now the bad thing about certain tunneling creatures is if you have anybody in the party with the the tunneling creature anybody selected uh that doesn't have the tunneling ability then it won't actually tunnel you have to have it all selected or have just those guys selected and you can actually uh, select just like certain specific units if you want and so on but we we don't want to right now uh let's go ahead and get everybody here all right i think that's the best we can okay let's go ahead and do that get all of that together and that's the best we can do for this turn pretty much so what we want to do is continue this way 
I think. Let's go up first. Yes, here are the goblins we want. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab these guys. They will, uh, well, they're a bit greedy. They're going to take gold to help us, but we'll take it anyways. All right, let's go ahead and send you guys up a bit. And let's go in here, and this is going to be our main stronghold, so let's go ahead and fortify a couple times. Now, we are still hemorrhaging money badly, but uh, we'll, we'll get there soon enough. All right, I'm not too concerned about those. Yeah, we've got uh, elves already here, so that's not particularly good. All right. But they've run off, so we're going to actually go ahead and grab that farm this next turn. Now, you can actually starve farms and towns by occupying the uh, the actual surrounding hexes. You know, all these golden fields and so on, you can actually uh, grab them like that. Okay, let's go ahead and send these guys off that way. You know, split up our parties a bit. Because you want to try to grab stuff as quick as possible. We're still bleeding gold here. All right. Let's go ahead and continue here. We should be able to handle these guys. Yeah, I didn't lose anybody. And we'll go ahead and take this town too. There we go. Now we're going to actually migrate our town to goblins. It's going to take four turns, but that's all right. We'll take uh, this one as well and see if we can't capture the... Okay, maybe not this turn, but we'll go ahead and get this one migrating too. Now, we're going to end up like with a, a huge deficit for a while, but it's going to be all right, I think. I do want to start splitting these up to join our other three parties. There we go. Yeah, they are just not leaving much in the way of defenders. <laughs> Oh, that's a party of eight. That's not good. That could potentially wipe us out. I'm going to send this guy off to here to grab this so we can see a little bit more of our surroundings. And the same with the rest of these. And I want that human town as well. I'm probably not going to migrate them. There's no real need to do that. There we go. I could end up losing these groups, but I think that'll be all right. We're, we're doing decently well, I think. It's been forever since I've played this scenario, so... Because the last few times I played this game, I tried to start the Keeper scenario and, and run it through, and then I get stuck. All right. Uh, was I migrating? Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if I was migrating that town or not. Yep. I'm going to lose this one. Damn. That did not go as well as I'd hoped. So that's not great. <laughs> it's better than nothing, but it's not great. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that. And... Go ahead and come back down here. Get them together. And everybody else, I mean, we pretty much just have to hold steady. Now, the problem is when you have zero gold and you're not making any more, like you're in the negatives, uh, after a while, your units will start deserting because <laughs> you can't pay the upkeep on them. And it'll continue until you're in the positive or nobody's left. All right, we've got one more turn until they're goblins, and then they'll start producing more gold for us. Probably shouldn't have fortified that town. There was no real need to it. I'm going to lose this party. Oh, I'm surprised I did not lose the party. Damn. All right. So we've got goblins here. Let's go ahead and grab this human town. Thank you. Now, these guys are uh, neutral and they're stable, so we don't have to worry about them too much. So let's go ahead and head, head back over here. What I actually want to do is uh, we'll go ahead and queue up a couple fortifications. Not that we have the gold for them, but the reason why I want to do that is because that'll improve the race relations and improve the conditions and relations with the, the town itself. And I don't want them to go below, you know, what they already are. Now it looks like we're about to lose our uh, mines to the south. So let's go ahead and grab this guy again. All right, and get you migrating. There we go. I probably should have migrated human. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to do that because that's going to improve our race relations. Now, humans are a... Uh, humans are... It's going to take another turn. Humans are a neutral race. And so 
uh, they can go either way, good or evil. So it's not usually too hard to to uh, uh, get them on your side, regardless of, of what you're playing as. All right. So we're going to send our uh, leader's party back down to try to recapture our mines down there. And everybody else is kind of stuck. Oh, that is not good. I do not want to be down there. Um, <laughs> not good. Let's, let's head back up here for a second and hold out for a turn. And I may need to, need to start uh, pumping out new units. I could really use a level 2 town. So, I don't know. Let's go ahead and grab these guys. So what's interesting here is the uh, goblin special unit on, on tier 1 is a bomber. And they have self-destruct. And you can actually use self-destruct to breach walls. So I don't know why they have a battering ram. But they don't have a, a mounted unit. They have that's uh, they have the bomber instead. All right, let's go ahead and send this guy down to check things out down there now. Yep, let's go back up. All right, and gotta wait another one turn for the humans here. And how's this turn doing? They're still content. They're cheerful now, and these guys are content. So let's go ahead and explore down the path here a little bit more. Okay, I want my... Uh, I want this guy to head over here. And I do want to check out this monster layer when I can, but that's going to wait a little while. So you can see now we're in the green. We're actually producing gold, although we just lost a town, so that's not great. But we did get a level up, and we're actually going to conserve these points this time. So we'll go ahead and grab this. And that will give us a good look at the area around us. And then here, since they grabbed our town, we're going to grab theirs. And while we're at it, we're going to migrate to humans, improve our relations with them. And we're going to send this guy up there as well. And these guys... Well, let's try to take them out before we head down here. Oh, thank you. They they ran away. So that's good. I can actually just grab over here and then send them up. And these guys will send over here to take care of this town. So you can actually uh, see our goal is actually like right up here. And you can see there's another watchtower over this way as well. If I can, I'll try to get over there. Uh, let's hold off moving. So yeah, the first scenario here is not too bad as long as you know about tunneling and how to get through that, that first section. All right, let's go ahead. Before we join up there, let's go ahead and grab this farm. Yank it. And down there. So our goal is actually like right there. Um, we'll keep him on guard for right now. Yeah, I'm definitely glad I, I put walls on that town because that's keeping the rest of their forces from coming up here. That's not great. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. I know, he's already defeated. And now, damn, gotta wait another turn to take that town. All right. So we've got humans here. Can I defeat the nymph? That's what I'm worried about. Because the Nymph can seduce. It's, it's kind of like Dominate. The Nymph can seduce uh, your parties or your uh, units away from you. <laughs> they just keep trying to capture stuff uh, out from under me. And it's not working. Alright, now these guys are Orc Assassins. And they have wall climbing. Which means that uh, provided uh, there's no defenses... They can actually just capture walled units. You don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and do another human town. And improve things just a little bit more. Grab that and then back down here. And we'll leave those guys away, uh, behind. We're slowly siphoning their uh, forces away from them. Alright, so that's it for this turn. Now they do have boats, so they can they can grab their units from the other side of, uh, from the mainland here and bring it over to the island. But I don't really see that happening too much. 
All right, we've got him installing a bomber. Seriously, you just are going to keep going after that. Thank you. And we will go ahead and grab your mine next turn as well. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So the uh, human's special uh, unit is the pikeman. Let, but we're going to ignore that. We're going to produce a couple swordsmen, a couple archers, and a battering ram. And you can see we're doing gangbusters on, on gold now as well. So we don't have to worry about that. And you know what? I may not make it all the way over to the, the rest of uh, the mainland. There might not be too much point to it. I do want to check out this monster key, uh, uh, layer, though. I almost forgot about that. Okay, let's produce a couple bombers, which are going to take two turns to produce. Because this is a level one town. That's one hex town. And everybody else here. Go ahead and take that. So, yeah, the elven leader here, Queen Elwyn doesn't have much in the way of defenses. You know, she's got four units to her name, and that's it. Go ahead and grab that. And we'll grab some other stuff from her soon enough as well. Let's put him on guard for now. And... Okay, we'll have to wait. Now, this game does do auto-saves, but I'm going to do a little something here because I don't care if I save scum. Let's go ahead and call this... Not Goblin. Goblin. There we go. All right. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and search. Ooh, that's not good. We've got a Beholder and a Scorpion. But we took them all down and we picked up a shield, which uh, adds one to defense. Okay, so let's go ahead and round up there and then start heading north to take on the Elven Queen. As we kind of steal the rest of the resources on the island, leaving her just in her town besieged. All right. Let's go ahead and grab the shipyard. And that just leaves the watchtower here. There is a town on the mainland as well. I don't remember if it's a level 2 town or not. It might just be level 1. But if you don't tunnel, you won't be able to have enough resources, even with that town, to survive. Alright. Go up here. And now, we start to lie in wait. And we'll actually bring these guys up here as well. Oh, that's going to have to wait for the next turn. Okay. Now, this is probably going to be overkill, but I'm going to... Yeah, see how there this uh, hex isn't gold anymore? That's how you know that like it's not producing what it should be. So when you occupy those hexes, they no longer produce as much. And that's You can actually starve out your, uh, your competitors that way by surrounding and sieging their cities. It's not a very effective tactic, but it does work. All right. We are going to save. Because we're probably just about to end this. Let's just go ahead and do automatic. See, we won. We lost our Orc Assassins and we lost our Beetle, which kind of sucks, but that's all right. On day 27, the Empire of the Elves, led by Elwyn, was defeated. Talek of the Goblins, you are victorious! And you can see, like, right back here is where we started winning and they started losing in terms of structures. Overall, it was only within the last turn. We were actually about even this turn. So. The Toad Queen is dead. Julia should thank me. By slaying her mother, she can claim to rule Aldor, though Meandor is the true heir. History cannot forget me. I have sent the goblins scattering across the countryside. Mobs of vengeful elves stalk my decoys. The forces of Alder scatter, while I move to the next phase of Meandor's plan to cripple the Keepers. The halfling united cities are now under siege, but those besieging are morons. Without my help, they will fail. Time is short. I debate whether to follow the established northern trade route or a subterranean path beneath the impeding mountains. So as you can see here, we can actually choose for our next mission to take the trade route, 
or the subterranean path. But that will be next time for the uh, the Cult of Storms, because now it's time to check out the Keepers. <laughs>